Hi, I am Mehmet Kapper, today we will design a different structure with you. These pictures came to Ramcad, our India dealer. The owner of the project is from the United Kingdom. They asked if MK Apeb could design this structure. Today we will try to answer this question. Let's review the project a bit. There are different building elements from the ones we are used to, especially on the roof and wall bracings. I see N type 2 bracings here. The connection of the braces to the column or rafter is different from what we are used to. The second difference is that the gutter is used instead of a stability beam. The girts are on the inside of the column. The gutter also is used as the uppermost girt. At the same time, instead of purlin, the gutter is taken into account on the column. If you take into account, the brace column connection is designed as a simple shear connection. Rafter brace connection is similarly designed. Stability beams are bolted to the column at the splicing joints. We may not be able to design this structure exactly with MK Apeb. But I will try to show the closest design possible. I ran Kapeb. It came with English interface. Let's start a new project. Let's start a new project. My project's name is Edinburgh. It's a portal frame structure. I select type is 101. Span length is 20. Column height 6 and distance between axis is 6 meters. Let's try to determine the dimensions of our structure by looking at the picture. There are 11 axes. And there is only bracings at the beginning and at the end. First of all, let's edit the dimensions of our portal frame. I want the roof slope to be close to 20%. I increase the NL value so that the distance between the purlins is also 1.46 meters. I haven't made any changes to the rest of the features. Now let's add new axes to make our structure 60 meters long. There are only bracings at the beginning and end of the structure. Let's remove the intermediate axes. The default value of bracing type in Kapeb is of X type. If we remember the pictures, we should use the N type in this project. And get it with brace column connection with shear plate. Similarly I change the YZB axis. It's time to add wind columns to our structure. Front shield cladding is sandwich panel. Let there be a wind column in purlins number 5 and 9. We're in the back now. Let's use sandwich panels on this shield wall as well. Let there be a wind column on purlins 5 and 9 like the front. Let's take a look at the pictures of our building again. It's like a 2 meter high brick wall on 3 facades. We can define these brick walls as curtain walls in MK Apeb. Let the columns be connected by shear walls on the YZA axis. Let the height of our shear wall be 2 meters and the width of the foundation shoe is 700 millimeters. The girts and bracings on the side facade start at over 2 meters. There is a problem with the shield front and back girts. Now, let's open the section assignment window of the main columns. No cladding in the far right column. This side is wide open. Also, no cladding in the rightmost column on intermediate axes. Now, the initial level of the front and rear girts has improved. Thus, we have created a very approximate model of the building in the picture. We choose Eurocode 1 as the load standard and we will use the UK National Annex. In MK Apeb, there are national annexes belonging to 18 European Union member countries. Let the roof covering be sandwich panel. Now let's assign snow loads. Edinburgh must be somewhere in the area, in zone 4. Snow load on the ground for 100 meters altitude 0.6 kN slash M2. Now let's come to the wind loads. Edinburgh was somewhere in that area. Within zone E. Wind speed for zone 36 meters per seconds. I took the internal pressure coefficient as minus 0.3 since one side of the building is open from one side to the other. It's time to define the thermal effects. 
the summer and winter indoor temperature of the building is 24. The highest outside temperature in summer is 35, and the lowest minus 10 in winter. And let's build our structure at 20 degrees Celsius. The facade of the building is southwest. And let's use a light colored coating on the facade. As a result of this information, our structure will stretch by 24.5 degrees Celsius in summer and shorten to minus 13 degrees in winter. The thermal effects we calculated here will be used in the static analysis of the wall bracings. Since this project is in United Kingdom, we will use Eurocode 8 as the seismic code. Let's choose the Eurocode 8 National Annex for the United Kingdom. Edinburgh is in Zone 2 and we will calculate for 0.04 .04 peak ground acceleration. I think there are earthquakes with a magnitude of less than 5.5. Therefore I choose Spectrum Type 2. Ground type is C and building importance factor is 2. And this steel structure has moment resisting frames. Let's check the loads acting on our structure according to the loads we defined. Snow load on roof sheeting. Wind loads on roof and wall claddings. Wind from the left. Wind from the right. Wind from the front. And we saw wind loads in four different directions, including from the behind. We first transfer these loads on roofs and facades to purlins and girts. Then we can see how these loads are transferred to the main carrier system. If you wish, let's move on to the calculation of the secondary building elements according to the loads we have calculated. Let's check the steel structure standard before moving on to the roof purlin calculation. In this project we will use Eurocode 3. Light steel structural elements can be calculated according to Eurocode 313 with MK APEB. I found the C225 to be insufficient. Let's enlarge. Now the C225 is enough. Let's analyze the girts according to the wind loads. Let's use the same section as the purlins. No variety of materials. Let's check the girts on the shield facades. I don't want to use different materials. That's why I chose the C225. Let's change the rear girt section to C225. Now we come to change the cross sections of the main columns. Let all columns of XC1 axis be HIA 320S275. And most right column has no cladding. All columns of intermediate axis will be HIA 320S275. And most right column has no cladding. I think we made a mistake, the girts on the left side disappeared. Let's check the sheetings on the columns. Let's change the leftmost column cladding type to sandwich panel. Let's repeat the same process for the XZ2 axis. Now the left side girts have arrived. Let the rafter cross section be EPA 330. Steel grade S275. Let's use the same sections on all axes. For this I choose again. Let's change the cross section of the stability elements. We cannot use rods on end type bracings as it will work with compression. Therefore I will use a non-slender pipe profile. I chose the CHS 114.3 by 5 pipe profile. I choose the same profile for the stability beams connecting the columns from the top. Let's do our first static analysis. Let's see to what extent the cross sections we have chosen will be sufficient.
CHS 114 by 5 is insufficient. Maybe we shouldn't use the 6 mm thick one. Let's look at the axial forces on the rods for the YZ axis. Our loads for earthquake loads are like this. Axial loads when the building elongates in summer due to thermal loads. Axial loads when the building gets shorter in winter. We can examine the axial forces according to the left and right, front and rear winds. When we click on the diagram, we can see its value. We have seen that the cross sections of the stability braces are insufficient. Now let's check the front shield frame elements. Wind column sections are insufficient on the front shield facade. When we look at the intermediate axles, I see capacity ratios such as 1.4, 1.6 for the rafters. Now let's enlarge the cross sections respectively. Let's increase the stability elements first. I changed the cross section of our wall brace to CHS 114.3 by 6. We had a problem with our wind columns. Let's try using EPA 330 in wind columns. I made such a choice to use the same section as the rafter cross section. I put a check mark to use the same section on the rear axles. Then I changed the section again. We forgot to define lateral support in the beams. These structural elements are very important for lateral torsional buckling calculations. With a jump I marked the purlins with lateral supports. I'm restarting static analysis. There is no problem in the YZA axis. Let's look at the YZB axis. Give those exceeding 1.0 capacity ratio. We had to use CHS 114.3 by 8 mm. We had insufficient wind columns on the shield front. EPA 330 was the right choice. Lateral beam supports worked. But the displacement condition was not met. We have to choose one large section. Let's make the necessary corrections. Let's start with the stability elements. Let's try our luck by changing the stability diagonals on all axes to 114.3 by 6.3. I want to change the sections on all axles. My new cross section EPA 360. I started static analysis. There was no problem in the YZA axis. We have solved the problem of the front shield wind columns. When the beam section is selected as EPA 360, the displacement boundary conditions are also provided. Let's look at the approximate cost of our construction. In this structure, approximately 36.87 kg M2 of steel is used. Let's examine the cross sections of our structure. Is there anything that bothers the eyes? It's actually a pretty nice portal frame. Let's move on to the next step, the design of the connections. The design of the joints will be made according to EN 1993-18. The connection at point zero from the intermediate axis. Let's look at the results. Moment resistance is insufficient. Usually the reason is the plate thickness. I changed it to 20 mm. Let's look at the results again. The moment strength is now sufficient. Let's look at the reference project pictures. It says 4 rows of bolts should be enough. 
let's reduce the number of bolt rows to 4. 4 rows of bolts was enough. Now let's look at the limitations on dimensions. There are problems with weld thicknesses and distances between bolts. Let's set the number of rows of bolts to 5 to solve the problem with the distance between the bolts. Remain the problem with a weld thickness. I changed the weld thicknesses. Let's check again. Now everything is OK. Let's save the parameters of this connection to use it in the rightmost column beam joint. Now the rightmost column beam connection. I got the connection properties from XC20R. I checked the results. Everything is OK. Let's check the bolted plate splicey connection on the ridge node. The third row bolt is too close to the rafter flange. Let's try four rows of bolts. Enough, let's save the properties in this connection. Now, we come to the column base plate connection and reinforced concrete pad foundation calculations. First let's look directly at the calculation results. From this table, we see that the dimensions of the foundation and the reinforcements used are insufficient and there is a problem in the moment strength of the column base plate. Let's first solve the problem with the column base plate. Plate dimensions 500 by 600 and thickness 30 millimeters. Let's use M24 anchors rods in ISO 8.8 .8 grade. Get one more extra row of anchors outside the column flange. Now let's check the calculation results. There is a problem only in the reinforcement of the pad foundation. Soil bearing capacity is very close to the limits. Let's change the pad foundation dimensions. Let's first look at the picture of our reference project. The structure in the picture does not have a short column above the foundation. I changed DF and T to 80 cm to remove short column. Ground bearing capacity is still insufficient. We have to enlarge the pad foundation dimensions. I changed the foundation dimensions to 300 by 200 cm. Now soil bearing capacity is OK. Now let's change the foundation reinforcements. Longitudinals rebars, 20 mm in diameter at 17 cm intervals. Travers rebars, 16 mm in diameter at 19 cm intervals. I changed rebar intervals and I checked results. I changed longitudinal diameter to 24 mm and I checked results. Now all is OK. Flag plates were not visible in the reference project image. Maybe they were stuck in the ground floor concrete. For this, let's make the height of the flag plates 150 mm. Let's save the connection properties to use in the far right column. For the rightmost column, I open the connection number 16. Let's get the properties from the connection number 15. Everything is OK. Similarly, we must design the connections on the front shield axes.
In this way, we have completed the design of all the connections of our structure. Let's create a 3D model of our structure. Our 3D model is completed. If you wish, let's examine the 3D model. Let's look at the column beam connection. I don't see any problem with this bolted moment connection. Perlin supports are OK. Our lateral beam supports are correct. We have end type bracings at side facades. Bolted brace, column shear plate connection is like this. There are shear walls on three sides of our structure. Let's turn the model over and look at the non cladding face. These are our end type bracings. I think N-type is more economical solution than K-type bracings. There is no any stability beam at the middle of column. And total brace length is shorter. Very similar to the pictures of our reference project as you can see. After creating the model, we make numbering the parts. After numbering parts, we can see real cost of structure. In summary, we can say that 40 kilograms of steel per square meter should be used in this structure. You can get calculation reports from the window that opens when you press this button. The download link of the project's reports is given in the description section of our video. If there is no download link, please contact MKA Software or RamCADS. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.